Welcome to the channel. I'm Sean, this is Chef and LaShawn, and today we're in our Black Book series. We're going to be covering ceviche. Aren't you excited? I'm so excited. So I've lined up three great recipes for you. First, we're going to be doing octopus and pear. This is a style that you can find all over the eastern coast of Mexico. Then we're going to be moving a little further south to do a style that you can find in places like Guatemala or the Dominican with our king ceviche featuring kingfish or wahoo and big creamy chunks of avocado. Next we're going to be going a little further south doing a style that is indicative of places like Peru or Chile with our ceviche amarillo. It is peppery, it is sweet, it is beautiful and I can't wait to share all three of them with you. So let's get right into it. For today's recipe, you will need one dried guajillo chili, two serrano chilies, one Bartlett pear, half of a white onion, one yap yeah pear, one eighth of a bunch cilantro, four stems of fresh stevia, four medium garlic cloves, five ounces of pineapple juice, three ounces of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of pink Himalayan sea salt, five tomatillos, and two small Korean octopi. In order to butcher our octopi, we are going to start by cutting around the beak, separating the legs from the head. This part contains the ink sac and should be avoided if at all possible. We are going to cut the rest into half inch pieces. with a larger species of octopus, you will need to peel off and cut away the outer membrane or skin. Please make sure your vessel is non-reactive. I'm using steel for all of today's recipes, but you can also use well-sealed wood, silicone, high-quality plastic, fluid-grade rubber, or ceramic. Before we do anything else, we are going to throw our octopus in a bowl and give it a really good rinse to get off any residual ink or slime. Then we are going to add our pineapple juice, apple cider vinegar, and salt, and allow it to cook, break down, or tenderize for 15 to 20 minutes. This works not only because it is sitting in a high acid salt laden solution, but because pineapple contains a natural protease or protein digesting enzyme called bromelain. After our initial marinade, we are going to add the now finely diced tomatillos, both pears, our white onion and garlic, plus our now de-veined quartered and finely sliced serrano chilies. Mix it all together to incorporate, then allow it to cook for 10 minutes, after which we will remove as much of our liquid as possible in order to slow down the cooking process. Finally, we are going to add our chiffonade herbs and guajillo powder. We waited until the end for this so that our herbs won't wilt or get mushy, so that our flavors remain bright and distinctively vibrant. Also, this prevents them from getting washed out later. For our next recipe, you will need a one pound steak of kingfish, also known as wahoo two or three pomelos. I'm using a yellow variety because it happens to be in season. Three whole cactus fruit. I'm pretty sure these little guys are from a beaver tail cactus, but the more common Barbary figs work just as well. Half of a white onion. One small bunch of Siamese queen holy basil. One tablespoon of cactus honey. 
one tablespoon of kosher salt, 10 longon, which are similar to lychee, seven rambutan, which are also in that lychee type family. It's important to make sure you are using red, not brown or green. One larger Haas and green skin hybrid avocado. Four sugar rush peach chilies. Four Jimmy Nordellos. One eighth of a bunch cilantro. Here we have our beautiful little cactus fruit. Unfortunately, the edible part or meat of the fruit is coating hundreds of little seeds, which are rock hard and inedible. Fortunately, it shares a lot of similarities to citrus fruit, at least the ones found in the Western Hemisphere. So we will start by separating the meat from the peel, which should come out pretty easily with a spoon. We are going to put this directly into a fine mesh flour sifter. Normally I would say or chinois, but the pointed end of a traditional china cap would only make this process much harder. So flour sifter. Next, we need to firmly press this with our spoon, squeezing the juice like you would a fresh piece of citrus. Then we are going to scrape the remainder back and forth against the mesh and repeat. The abrasion here will separate the flesh from those pesky seeds. We won't get 100% of it, but most of it should come off. The majority of what you will see is the juice though. Start by adding 5 ounces of freshly squeezed pomelo juice, 3.5 ounces of cactus juice with pulp, 1 tablespoon of cactus honey, and 1 tablespoon of salt. Then we are going to briskly stir them until there is no visible honey remaining, showing its full incorporation. After which, we will add in everything but our herbs like before, and our avocado. Starting with our larger, chunkier cuts of Jimmy Nordello, the quartered and thinly sliced sugar rush peach chilies, the finely diced white onion, the thinly sliced longon and rambutan with as much of their juice as possible. Watch out for those hairs! The finely minced zest of one whole pomelo, our kingfish left in a large dice. Then fold everything together and let it cook for 15 minutes this time because it's a slightly lower acid solution. Then we are going to drain the liquid, just like before, in order to slow down our cooking process and fold in our herbs. <music> Lastly, once everything else has been incorporated, add in the avocado, which I have flaked out into small pieces using the tip of a spoon. Make sure to very carefully fold this together, otherwise you will end up with guacamole. And that's a whole nother video. For our last recipe, you will need a one and a half pound baby amberjack tuna, one tablespoon of guava salt, five ounces of key lime juice, half of a Korean melon, and an equal sized portion of golden melon, around half a pound one whole yellow bell pepper, half of which has been separately fire roasted, one whole yellow heirloom slicing tomato, four lemon drop peppers, half of a red onion, one small bunch of fresh peppermint, two stems of lemon balm, one eighth bunch cilantro. We are going to move our knife in long, clean strokes down the back of the fish, cutting through the pin bones and around the collar. Flip, remove head, and repeat. Then we are going to clean up our fillets, removing the belly, 
any bloodline, bone fragments, the collars, and pin bones. Lastly, we are going to slit the tail and shimmy our knife under the fillet and pull off the skin. Finally, dicing it up for our later recipe. Start by adding our tuna, left in a meaty half inch dice. Then add the golden melon, cut into a standard medium dice. For the Korean melon, I have flaked it out using the tip of a pointed teaspoon. All in a matching sized dice, our onion, bell pepper, tomato, then the lemon drop pepper is sliced thin as possible. Next, our guava salt and key lime juice. Fold everything together and let it sit so the acid in our key lime juice can cook everything around 10 minutes, at which point we will drain off the liquid and add in the cilantro, lemon balm, and peppermint cut into little ribbons. For a perfect pairing, I am plating these each with their own kind of chip. First, our king ceviche with plantain chips. Then, the octopus and pear with a more exotic black pepper lobster chip. And concluding with a striking juxtaposition, blue corn and our ceviche amarillo. If you enjoyed today's content, please like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. We would love to hear any comments about this or your favorite ceviche. Don't forget to ring that bell, and as always, have a stupendous week.